to St James today for our service of Holy Communion. My name is Charles and it's a privilege to uh, welcome those of you who swam here to the building this morning uh, and those joining us online who are no doubt safe and warm uh, wherever they're joining us from. So uh, it's wonderful to uh, be with you today. Uh, I invite you to take your seats everyone. I'm going to have a seat as well because uh, my knee's not been my best friend this week so I'll do a bit of the service sitting down if that's okay. Um, and as we uh, begin our worship today, just a couple of things to uh, bring to your attention. Um, after the service today, uh, due to the generosity of the church wardens, we're going to uh, have the opportunity to uh, have some coffee. And uh, this isn't something that we've done after a Sunday service for uh, a good long while, but um, we are obviously taking uh, precautions in the kitchen uh, and if you would like to uh, stay for a cup of coffee uh, after, or tea after the service, uh, then uh, please do. And I would encourage you uh, to kind of spread out and use the, the space of the building rather than all being um, in, the, in the carpeted area at the back. Um, of course, only do what you're comfortable with, but if you would like to stay, uh, then it'd be uh, lovely to catch up with you a bit more after the service. Uh, the other thing to say as we uh, begin today is, is really an invitation for you to um, pray for Chris Worley, uh, who unfortunately has had to go into hospital on Friday. Um, he's had uh, a heart attack, but he uh, is doing well. I saw him yesterday and we had a good chat. Uh, he's making friends with the people in the bed next to him, um, as you would expect. So uh, just ask you to uh, pray for Chris. Let, let's just um, take a moment to pray for him now. Father God, we thank you for Chris and we thank you for uh, the wisdom and professionalism of those looking after him. We ask that he would know that you are by his side at every moment and we ask your blessing upon him. In Jesus' name, amen. So he, uh, he sends you his best and uh, I'm sure he'll be back with us very soon. Everything you need for our service today will be uh, on these sheets and our service begins on page three and I invite you to uh, join in with the words in bold. So we gather today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's join together in the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to God today as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and peace. So we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join me in standing as we praise God in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, 
you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's sit and share a moment of quiet and prayer together. beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfil them, through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Vicky's very kindly going to bring us our first reading for today. Thank you. Vicky. children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the city gates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. James chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace 
for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Gillian. We're going to stand together now and sing our next hymn, which is Be Thou My Vision. standing to share our gospel reading. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Mark chapter 9, beginning to read at verse 30. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. 
he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please do have a seat, everyone. Pray that I would speak today according to the will of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. How can they be so stupid? However much we understand that Jesus' disciples don't often seem to get it, or however much we identify with their bumbling as they attempt to follow Jesus, I wonder if still we feel a bit smug when we hear about that squabbling that takes place in Mark chapter 9, about who among them is the greatest. Surely they know that that is not what following Jesus is about. Surely we would respond differently given that we've had those words of Jesus, the last shall be first and the first shall be last, retonating around our hearts and our minds. They've been in our language and our culture for hundreds of years. When the disciples are brought up short with deafening silence as they're found out by Jesus' questioning, perhaps we feel like they deserve it. But... Let me give you one example that will convince you beyond all doubt that we are obsessed by exactly the same things. You are currently number 76 in the queue. Are there anything more frustrating, exasperating than the automated queue? As human beings, we so often need to know, or we think we need to know, where we stand in relation to others. And in too many uh, arenas to name, we compare ourselves, we measure ourselves against other people to find our status, our value, and our identity. Well, rather than assuming that the silence of the disciples is simply exposure when they feel stupid, I'm going to invite us today to step into this passage a little more deeply. You can find it on page 9 of your service sheets. And as we look at this passage together, we will see how Jesus actually uses this argument the disciples are having to show them more about who God is. And in these few short verses, we get a picture of the whole good news about Jesus. Let's go back to that example of the queue that I spoke about a moment ago. Why is it that we need to know where we are in the queue, how we stand in relation to everyone else? I think it's because we're concerned that there won't be enough for us. We want to know that we will be all right. We want to know that we will get to the front of the queue. And the disciples, as we meet them in Mark chapter 9, are in exactly that same place of scarcity when Jesus is speaking. He's talking about the fact that when they leave Galilee, which is their home, the place that they know and they feel secure, and they get to Jerusalem, he's going to be handed over. He's going to be killed and rise again. We're told that they don't understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. They respond to Jesus talking about death with fear. In my mind's eye, I imagine the disciples walking along that road from Galilee to Jerusalem and coming to a narrow path, a bridle way, where they have to move in single file as they go along together. And in that moment, the way that they're walking becomes a sort of living picture of their greatest fears. I need to know where I stand because I don't want to die. I don't want to be picked off like some gazelle loitering at the back of a herd. I need to be the greatest. I need to be close to Jesus. I need to know that there will be enough for me. Perhaps as they walked along, 
They needed to turn and look over their shoulders to speak to one another and snatches of the conversation, ripples of fear and trepidation were passed up and down the row of the disciples. Jesus, whether he was at the back or the front of the group, obviously heard some commotion. What were you arguing about on the way, he asks them. What has been taking up so much of your attention as we've made this journey from Galilee to Jerusalem? Instead of making them feel silly, Jesus uses their conversation as an opportunity for them to sit down, for him to teach them, to show them once and for all what happens when the fear of scarcity is met with the abundance of God. I wonder how the disciples had been measuring greatness. Was it proximity to Jesus, time spent with him? Was it their own standing in their communities? Was it their money, their power, their influence? Or Jesus brings a child into their midst. In their society, children were neither to be seen nor heard. They had absolutely no social standing whatsoever, no power, no privilege, no position. People even referred to their slaves, young or old, as their little ones. By any reckoning, a child had no measure of greatness. And yet Jesus has time for this child. The original Greek of this passage gives us even more information than we get in the English. It talks about the child uh, being in the crook of Jesus' elbow as he embraces her and brings her in front of the disciples. You can't see the child without seeing Jesus. And you can't see Jesus without seeing the child. Jesus embraces all that is small and awestruck within us. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. And so it turns out when the abundance of love meets the logic of power and reason, it is welcome that is the measure of greatness. How often, how much did you pay attention to that person who was seemingly small and of no account, but who has so much wonder and depth to offer, if only you would seek it out? Welcome this child. Welcome me. Welcome the one who sent me. In this moment, as Jesus holds this child in front of him, we're given a picture of the whole of the good news. Because just like the disciples set out from their home in Galilee that Jesus might be handed over to the authorities, so God pours out his love extravagantly in sending Jesus from his heavenly home to be with us. Jesus comes among us as a little child, seemingly small and of no account. In Jesus, God entrusts himself to humanity, vulnerable and dependent. He opens himself up to such an extent that he can be betrayed. He can be killed because there are no lengths that God will not go to, to be with you and to lead you into forever. Just as Jesus takes that child in his arms and embraces her, so on the cross, Jesus binds to himself everything that seems small and insignificant within us. And just as the child is close to Jesus, so in Jesus' resurrection, he takes the heart of who we are into the heart of God. Do you know what happens when the disciples come to Galilee again? The angels say to the women at the empty tomb, tell the disciples that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. The embrace of Jesus brings us out of scarcity and takes us home. Jesus invites us 
to rush to Galilee, that place of resurrection and joy, skipping with childlike glee, simply neither knowing nor caring what place in the queue we are. Thanks be to God. Amen. to stand with me as we declare our faith in the words of the creed, which are on page 10 of our service sheets. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life to take your seats once more. Michael is going to come and lead us in prayer for today. <laughs> Dear Lord, you have given us the opportunity to meet you in the call of the poor and the cries of the needy. Give us the courage to serve and share in the love you have for all people. Teach us to listen, to be aware, and open to others. For in meeting them, we meet you. We give thanks today for all who have cared for us and brought us to know you and your love. We ask your blessings on all who serve as ministers and priests within your church. Especially we pray for Charles and Emma, for our bishops Christopher and John, and for our lay readers Ken and Sue. May your church be ready to serve the needs of our community and the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you for the love and care in our homes. We remember how we were looked after by our parents. May we never take those who love and care for us for granted. Help us to learn to help as much as we can in our own homes. Please, Lord, bless all homes. Where there is poverty or great debt, and we think of homes where individuals are ignored or taken for granted. We remember today those who live and work in Mersey Road, Mile Tree Lane, and the Mill Farm Mobile Home Park. We pray for those who have moved into Bulkington recently and that they will so soon feel part of a welcoming community. God, grant your grace to the community to which we belong, that there may be good communication between all our residents. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are affected by physical, emotional or mental illness. Help them.
them to keep their eyes fixed on you and give them the courage to face the trials that may lie ahead. Especially we pray for Paul Towers, Margaret Weitz, Anne McCree, Josie Baylis, Molly Frost, June Quinney, Maggie Harris, Sheila Pike, Helena, Stephen, Evelyn, Rachel Broomfield, and Chris Worley. Loving Father, we pray for those who have died recently, and especially we remember Denise War. We pray for those who have died alone, unnoticed, or unloved. We pray for those who have committed suicide or died in accidents, and we pray that those left behind that they find the consolation and support in their grief, grief and sadness. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, light, the light of the world, we pray that your light will shine in our lives and the lives of those who we love. In times of anxiety, give us faith. In times of suffering, Give us strength, and in times and in all times, give us a quiet trust in your wisdom and love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand to share the peace together. We give thanks today that Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. From where we are, whether here in the building or online, let's offer one another a sign of that peace.
here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit. The broken bread and wine outpoured would be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. And bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As we continue in prayer, let's sit together. And let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. So as we gather around the Lord's table this morning, you are all very welcome to come forward and to receive the bread as we share together. Or if you prefer instead to receive a prayer of blessing, if you'd like a blessing rather than to receive the bread as you come forward, uh, just keep your hands by your sides and I'll know that that's what you want uh, as you come forward today. And as we uh, move around the building, our stewards will uh, invite us to come forward uh, household by household as we share together. But today, come to this table, not because you must, but because you may. Not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Not because you have arrived but because you are still on a journey.
Come because you love the Lord a little and want to love him more. But above all, come because he loves you and gave himself for you.
let's join together in the prayer after communion, which you can find at the top of page 16 on the back page of our service sheets. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. everyone for uh, being here today both uh, in the building and online it's been wonderful to be uh, with you and uh, just a reminder that if you would like to stay uh, for some refreshment after the service then you are very welcome to do that today uh, just to draw your attention as well to uh, our newsletter for this week uh, you can find a copy of this online as well um, and just uh, tells you about a number of things that are coming up over the next few weeks uh, I'll try and go through them in chronological order, but I might uh, slip up occasionally. Um, on Sunday the 3rd of October, we're going to be celebrating our Harvest Festival here, um, and at the 10 a.m. Cafe Church service and the 6.30 Holy Communion service, it's going to be a chance to uh, donate to the local food bank, so if you'd like to do that, then please uh, come prepared on that Sunday. Um, then Saturday the 9th of October, we're going to be hosting, uh, along with Jack McCreef, um, at Mill and Coffee Morning here, um, starting at 10 a.m. on Saturday the 9th of October. And actually, uh, after the service today, uh, a number of people who are going to be involved in helping out with that are just going to be talking about arrangements for that. Uh, so if you would like to uh, help out on the day, uh, then uh, please loiter with intent at the end of the service and you can be part of that conversation as well. It'd be wonderful to have uh, as many people as can help uh, to come along and support that, that great cause. This isn't in the notices, I'm veering slightly off piste here, but the uh, Sunday after that Saturday, so that's the 10th of October, is the Harvest Festival in Burton Hastings, just to um, make you aware, and we'll have a, a service of Evensong to celebrate that. Uh, then the following day they will be holding their auction of produce um, as they have done in previous years so that's on monday the 11th of october at 7 30 that's just been confirmed so I, i'll put that in the news sheet next week um, so you, you can see that next week as well and then uh, finally at the very end of october the 31st of october we're going to be uh, celebrating all saints and all souls and at 4 30 we're going to have a service of commemoration and thanksgiving particularly uh, for those who have died in the last year, um, they will be remembered by name. But if there's anyone else, a, a loved one perhaps, that you would like to be remembered by name at that service, uh, there is a, a list at the back of church. And if you just write that person's name on the list, or if you email their name to May, her email is there, uh, then they can be included in that act of remembrance as well. Right, I think that's all I need to mention in terms of notices. Um, church wardens, have I forgotten anything? No? Miraculous. Okay. Well, a really exciting thing to conclude this part of the service is to publish some bounds of marriage. It gives me great joy to publish the bounds of marriage between Rebecca Alice Bradley of the parish of Chilvers Coton and Alex Thomas Hill also of the parish of Chilvers Coton. This is for the first time of asking and if anyone knows any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other you are to declare it now. Let's pray for Alex and Becky as they approach their wedding day. Father God we thank you so much for Alex and for Becky for the love they share for one another and for the journey that you have brought them on together. We ask that as they uh, approach their wedding day and the start of their married life, that you would be giving them everything they need, that you would be blessing them and drawing them close to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we uh, go out into our weeks this week, let's pray for God's blessing. The peace
peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.